Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're continuing with our series of YouTube videos to help you improve your chess game. It's been a while since we did an amateur game. Uh, people occasionally send me in a game that they think might be a good video. Uh, if you want to do that, you can just, just send me the raw score. You don't have to give me your notes. If you want to give me notes, you don't have to give me all the computer analysis. You can just tell me some of the things that, that you were thinking, but it's not necessary. You can just send me the raw score. And the best way to do that is through my website to email me uh, at, Dan Heis at go to danheisman.com and click on the uh, email icon or click on where it says email Dan, which we have on a lot of pages. Okay, so here's a game someone sent me. Uh, it's a 45-45 game. It's not time stamped. Uh, it was just the, the score was sent to me with the time stamping, but... Uh, when I put it into ICC, which is what you're looking here on the uh, YouTube video, uh, the time stamping is lost. That's okay. We'll uh, get a chance to see what's happening. So let's get going here. White's rated about a uh, little below 1600. Black's rated a little above 1600. By the way, if you have a game like this where the ratings are accurate, the, having white is worth roughly about, if I remember my... Uh, things correctly about 60 rating points which is about the rating difference between these two players so if you had to bet on this game it would be almost a toss-up all right so white plays e4 black plays e6 french white plays the main line d4 black plays the main line d5 white plays the classical main line knight c3 and black plays the classical knight f6 if instead black plays bishop d4 that would be the winner and now white has Two main lines. He has the kind of Steinitz variation with e5, knight d7, f4, or he can play the older <clears throat> bishop g5. The idea on bishop g5 is the bishop is what's guarding the e pawn. The e pawn is attacked twice, it's only guarded once, but by pinning the knight, black can't take the pawn. So now the main moves for black are bishop e7, again the classical main line and bishop b4 which is the very interesting um drawing a blank on the name for a second um uh, but anyway the very interesting move that i've actually mccutcheon variation that i've played which i think is fun to play for black now black plays h6 okay so if you're white and you know that bishop e7 and bishop b4 are the main moves and somebody plays h6 that should give you a hint that maybe there's something wrong with that move so if you know there's some, maybe something wrong with the move, you should try to think, what, what can I do to, you know, take advantage of this? Well, if you move your bishop to a random square, let's say bishop e3, then black has the pawn attack twice, and it's only guarded once. So a random square for the bishop won't make sense. So either you have to keep on the pin, or you have to take off the knight. It's got to be one of those two moves. Well, the problem with playing bishop h4 is black can play g5, which is essentially removing the guard on the pawn and allowing black to win a pawn. So that doesn't look right either, but what about giving up the bishop pair with bishop takes knight? Well, it turns out that that's the right move because black can't take with the queen. If he takes with the queen, then he's the one with the counting problem. White has the d-pawn attack twice and it's only guarded once. White wins a pawn with e takes d5. But if black takes back with the pawn, white should see that black has these broken up pawns and he should realize if he can get rid of this e-pawn, black's pawn structure is going to be a complete mess. So what white should do here is play e takes d5, e takes d5, and now black's king side is a wreck for the rest of the game. So white would have very excellent compensation here for his loss of the bishop pair. Okay, so that's what white should do. In the game, let's see how much time White took. White took, uh, I have the score over here, you can see it popping up a little bit on the right side of the screen. White took a fair amount of time. He took, it was a 45-45 game, he took over two minutes for the move, but he didn't figure this out. So unfortunately he played bishop to g5, uh, bishop h4, allowing g5, I should say. And of course, black does play g5, bishop g3, and now black has a choice. How does he want to win this pawn? Does he want to win the pawn by taking with the knight, or does he want to win it by taking with the pawn? 
it's fairly close. Let's let Stockfish take a look at it. And, and Stockfish says white has some compensation for the pawn. So this isn't a complete disaster here for black. Uh, Stockfish says black should probably take it with the pawn, which allows him to guard the pawn a little bit easier. Instead, he takes it with the knight. And white plays knight takes, which is correct. Pawn takes. And now white has a choice. He can try to break up the pawns with h4, which is the engine's top move. Or he could play like a gambit, like f3, and say, all right, if you take the pawn, I'll trade it for my pawn and develop the knight. And I'll be down a pawn, but I'll have good compensation with, with time. So the right move here, as I said, is h4, where Stockfish thinks white has full compensation. Instead, white plays... Um, the very strange and not so great move, bishop to e5. Well, he's been moving that bishop a lot, and, you know, black's probably not going to castle kingside anyway, so black can afford here to move the rook, and he won't castle kingside, but black's just up a nice pawn here. Instead, black makes a provocative move. He plays the very dangerous move f6. Well, the good news is it makes the bishop move again. The bad news is it opens up the diagonal, the h5 to e8 diagonal to the king. And now white can play queen h5 check first before he saves the bishop. The bad news about playing queen h5 check first is if he moves the bishop now, he might have to sacrifice the second pawn. So black plays the only really good move he can play. He wants to keep attacking the d pawn, so he plays king to e7. All right, and now we would expect that white's going to save the pawn, black's going to take the pawn, and we're going to get something like bishop g3, queen takes d4, now black's threatening queen takes b2, so maybe c3, queen to b6, castle queen side, and even though black can't castle, white just doesn't have enough for his two pawns here. Stockfish says black's ahead by about 1.2 after a move like e5, which blocks the bishop and opens up his bishop. And even though black's king's caught in the center, uh, white's going to have to depend on some black errors to, to try to get back in the game. But that's not what happened. Instead, white makes a little bit of an incomprehensible move. Let's see how much time he took on the move. White now thinks for about three minutes and plays queen to g6 well he's sacrificing the bishop but what's he going to get for it what's his next move after that so black of course has to take the bishop and he should white's threatening to take on f6 best way to save f6 is to win a piece so f takes e5 white takes back and white's thinking oh i can check here and win this rook now. But of course the problem is it's black's move and black has moves that will stop that. In particular he has knight to d7 guarding the f6 square. Well the good news for white is black's pieces are a little cramped and his king's caught in the middle. The bad news for white is he's down a piece and his only piece that's in the attack is his queen. So this kind of position does not promise white a lot of long-term success but it might give him a lot of fun if you know black plays wrong. For instance, here, white could be threatening bishop c4 and taking on e6. But the, if the problem is black in some lines can play knight takes e5 and then queen f6 is still not possible. So white needs to save that e5 pawn. White castles queen side. That makes sense by pinning the knight. So the knight could take the pawn and hit the queen. But if he takes the pawn and hits the queen, White can take here, hitting the knight and hitting the queen, and then the knight would have to go back to d7, and that's not bad for black, but it's probably not his best line. Certainly, if they can't find anything better, that would be reasonable. Instead, black plays queen to e8 and says, let's trade queens. Of course, black's up a piece, so white can't trade. So white brings his queen back to e4, guarding the pawn on e5, and he's kind of hoping that with black's king caught in the center that maybe he can outplay him in the middle game and and get some attack 
All right, so here, black plays bishop to g7, hitting this pawn again. White has a couple ways of trying to save it. He could play f4, but then black can remove the guard with g takes f4, although that could open up the king some more. Or he could play knight to f3. <clears throat> Let's see how much time he took on this move. He took... Um, <clears throat> Wow, he took almost four minutes on this move, and he decided to play f4. Okay, so the question is, should black try to remove the guard and then take this pawn, or should he? is he better off just developing here? Stockfish says the best move is knight to c5. Black plays queen f7, putting more pressure on the f4 pawn. White plays the only move he can, g3. To maintain the center so again white has you know some chances right because queen f7 wasn't the best move white's advantage is down to a sorry black's advantage is down to about 1.2 all right so and white has a problem he, he's got to find some targets on how to play here black's problem is how does he finish de his development like how does he get his queen bishop and his queen rook into the game right now okay so after g3 uh, black, let's see, how much time did Black, Black's been playing pretty slow. He plays G takes F4, and he's down to 24 minutes left. But he does have a 45-second increment. And here, White, of course, should capture back fairly quickly. He does not want to trade queens, so he should take with the pawn, and he does. Does that fairly quickly, as he should. And Black attacks the pawn again with Rook F8. And white takes uh, not too much time to play knight to e2 to guard the f4 pawn. So again, things are kind of holding steady. The problem is that black's the one up a piece, and unless white can really generate some sort of attacking idea here, black's going to slowly consolidate and just win the game. And if you're playing black in a position like this, you have to have patience. You know, make sure you look for all of your opponent's threats. You know, ask yourself, what are all the things his move does, not just why did he make that move? And, you know, if Black does that here, he's got an extra piece on the board to help defend things. And if he says to himself, if I can keep defending things and slowly develop all my pieces, I should be able to, to win the game. On the other hand, Stockfish now thinks that White has full compensation. Why? Well, it doesn't really like this move Rook to F8. It thinks that just helped White develop the piece. It, it said instead that Black should have given up on that f4 pawn and played rook to d8. So Stockfish actually thinks that Black's tying up some of his army unnecessarily while White's, at, White's guarding his pieces. And now he actually thinks that White's slightly better here. So, you know, as Black, you want to trade everything off and, you know, try to win, but... Sometimes it only takes a few, in a, in a position like this, which is fairly imbalanced, it only takes a few mistakes to give, let your opponent back in the game. Okay, so here, Black now comes up with the idea, I will play Rook to B8 so I could fianchetto my bishop with B6 and not hang the Rook. And Stockfish says White should now get a winning attack with either Rook G1 or maybe Bishop H3. White plays queen to c4, moving the queen again, hitting the pawn on c7. Well, not only can black guard the pawn on c7, but it's not even clear that taking the pawn on c7 will win the game. So it's not a bad move. But getting your pieces in the game with rook g1 or bishop h3 certainly makes a lot more sense. So now black has to decide. Does he want to let white take that pawn, or does he want to save it? He has lots of ways to save it. Turns out the best, again, according to the engine, is king to d8, which does pin the knight, but that's okay. He's still going to be able to play b6 and bishop b7 soon. And white doesn't have a lot of pieces on the queen side to attack. Later on, black can get out of the pin. Instead, black plays b6, which should lose the game if white plays correctly. All right, so white plays his obvious move. Queen takes c7. And now black's the one who's actually in trouble now. Having won that pawn on c7, white now has two pawns for the piece. The knight on e2 is guarding the f4 square. Um, white is not threatening rook takes d7, bishop takes d7, queen takes b8, because 
when the bishop takes on d7, the rook on f8 will be guarding the rook. But still, white can play more moves to increase his pressure, like rook to g1, bishop h3. He can play queen d6 check in some lines, or even rook to d6. And black doesn't have a lot of good ideas here. So black's in some trouble, and he's a little bit low on time. And here, black plays his best move, rook to d8. And he's got about 20 minutes left on his clock. All right, so white had 24-34 left after his 19th move, queen c7. And now white thinks for about, ooh, let's see here. He goes from 24-34 all the way down to 15-59. So he thinks for about nine minutes if we account for the 45-second time delay. And he plays bishop h3, which is a good move. His best move, by the way, is to sacrifice this pawn with check with knight d4. Well, we won't expect the human to see that. Let's look at what the computer says. The computer says knight d4, queen takes f4 check, king to b1, and now black has no moves. For instance, suppose black plays bishop takes e5, then knight c6 check. If the king goes... Well, the problem is the knight is attacking the rook. If the king goes back, the queen takes the rook check. But if the king goes to f7, then simply queen d8 has a million threats. Queen e7, knight takes b8, rook takes d7, and white is winning. So it, it turns out the time white took on this move was reasonable in the sense that if he can find that knight d4 giving the black the pawn with check, is a winning idea that's not easy to see for you know players at this level then the time is well spent the problem is he plays bishop h3 well bishop h3 does have a target on e6 and stockfish says if you play bishop h3 and you play perfectly you're still winning so this is a this is a very reasonable idea but white has to be a little careful about his time now all right so black plays his best move again it's good to play good defense he plays bishop a6 hitting the knight and now, if white plays rook takes d7 check, rook takes d7, queen takes b8, black can probably just play bishop takes e2. So the winning move here for white is to play f5 and threaten to take this pawn and hit the bishop and the knight and even let him take the knight. Again, not an easy move to find, but f5, if bishop takes e2, f takes e6, hitting the queen, Queen f4 check, king to b1, and now if black says let's get greedy and keep taking things, bishop takes d1, queen checks, king e8, pawn checks, having that extra bishop on it is monstrously good, king f7, e6 check, look at those pawns, black's up a whole bunch of pieces but his king's in danger, king g8, and now queen takes f4 check, so e5 check of course, it is a discovered attack on the queen. Okay, so not easy to see at all. Fun for us to look at with the computer. So f5 is winning, and, and Stockfish says if you don't play f5, every other move is no better than a slight white advantage. So here white plays rook to d6, and Stockfish says, oops, that's a 10-pawn mistake. It says if you play f5, you're up over four pawns. And if you play rook d6, you're down about six pawns. So that's a pretty big mistake. White thinks he's going to be able to play rook takes e6 check and get some play. Or maybe even bishop takes e6. But it's just not enough. Let's see how much time he took on that move. Uh, rook to d6. As we said, white's been playing a little bit too slow. Um... He, oh, he took a monster amount of time there. He took 10 minutes, so his clock went from 15.59 to 6.44, which actually is exactly 10 minutes if you include the 45-second increment that he gets at the end of the move. So he took exactly 10.00 on that move, and that's pretty much the losing move. So I've always said to my students, how fast do I play on my worst moves? And a lot of them guess that I play way too fast. And the answer is no, I'm a master. When I play fast, it's because I know what I'm doing and I wouldn't play fast unless I'm pretty sure what I should be doing. 
it's the moves where I play slow, where I make my worst mistakes, not because I shouldn't play slow, but because I'm, pl I'm always playing slow. And, I do, and if I play, if I don't know what to do and I take a long period of time and I don't figure it out right, which happens, I'm only human. Those are some of my biggest mistakes, but I don't make big mistakes because I make a move in three seconds and I should have taken three minutes. <clears throat> That's, you don't get to be a good player if you do that. So my worst moves are moves where I take a lot of time. Now I have some good moves where I take a lot of time too, obviously. But you know, if I'm gonna move quickly in a move, assuming I'm not in time trouble, I can make a terrible move in time trouble by moving quickly, but it's rare that I'll make a quick move and make it like a terrible mistake. Now, sometimes when I'm playing out loud against the computer for a video and I'm trying to finish the video in 30 minutes and I'm rushing, yeah, okay, sometimes I make a move in 40 seconds where I should have taken three minutes and that's because I don't want to make an hour and an hour video. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really doing the time control for the, for, the, uh, <laughs> for the video rather than what's on my clock. So I always try to tell people that in the start of the amateur games is, I'm trying to make about a half hour of video, so don't pay too much attention to my time management here. Okay, anyway, so rook d6, and now we give black a lot of credit. He finds his best move, rook on b to c8, and all of a sudden, he's not only working to trap the queen and win the knight, but he's also working on that c2 pawn. So now white's in trouble, but he doesn't have a lot of time either. So he plays queen takes a7 hitting the bishop on a6. And black says, well, I'll save the bishop by winning your knight. So now black's up two pieces. Is white really threatening to take this pawn? No, because if worse comes to worse, black can always give up his queen for the rook and the bishop, and giving up a queen and a pawn for a rook and a bishop is not that much when you're up two pieces to begin with, and then black would have a lot more pieces left on the board than white would. But black doesn't have to do that. Black, black can try for defense. It's it's white's turn now, though. So white plays rook takes check. And black doesn't have to play queen takes. The computer says queen takes is a big mistake, letting him get back in the game, because after queen takes, white can play queen a3 check as is Vishenzug. And white gets a lot of good play there. So black plays the obvious and best rook to f8. And white really has no attack here. He's got two connected pass pawns for the piece, and the bishop's a little blocked in, but that's, that's not nearly enough for the bishop and knight that he's down. And notice this knight's not pinned to the king anymore. So, and black's actually developing an attack now on the queen side. Black's rooks are just as good, if not better, than white's rooks. Okay, so white plays queen a3 check. Notice that rook on h1 has never moved. Earlier we saw Stockfish was saying, hey, get that rook on g1, get it into the game. White never did that, and that's part of what hurt him, although you know, really the move rook d6 was the losing move. All right, so black plays king to g8. White plays f5. Well, if black wants, he can just take this pawn. He has other good moves. He's got a lot of good moves here. Stockfish says the best move is knight c5 hitting the rook. Black says, I'll take the pawn. Plenty good enough. He's got all kinds of good play here. He can play... Knight d3 check, taking advantage of the sneaky pin, which would also get a double attack on the b2 pawn with the knight and the bishop. He's got all kinds of play. White white has no defense here. White finally gets the rook in the game. Rook g8, pinning the bishop. And Stockfish says black's best move is knight f3, but in this kind of position, you don't need to find your best move to win the game. He plays queen c7, threatening mate on c2. Plenty good enough. White blocks there. Now you can see black is on the attack and he's got the two extra pieces. Well, white could resign, but white's low on time. Black plays queen d7, threatening to come down to d2 and start a mating attack. White says, uh, I'm losing. I'll let you come down. Maybe you won't play it right. I'll play f6 and p try to win your bishop. I'm also threatening maybe to remove my rook and get an attack on your queen. Black says, I bet if I give a bunch of checks here, I can win. So he plays queen d2 check, and he's got 206 left on his clock. So one of the things you can do when you're in a position like this is you can give a couple checks and gain a little more time to try to figure out what's going on. So white plays there, and now black should either play, since queen d1 check is not made, rook takes, rook takes, king c2. 
He should probably play either bishop d3 check or maybe even better queen d3 check. The reason why queen d3 check is better, not that it's a better move, it is because you can he can't go in the corner because then you can play queen d1 check. Now it turns out it is a better move, but I'm saying you're not playing it because it's a better move. You're playing it because he has to go back to c1, and that gives you time on the clock. So he does play that move, and he plays it fairly quickly, so we got to give black some credit here. He pl took play that move in 12 seconds. So now black can't play king a1 because queen d1 check will be mate in two. So he has to come back, and now black has a pleasant choice. He can repeat the position twice, as long as he doesn't repeat it three times, and give, up, give him a draw. Or he can try for even more with queen e3 first. Either way, you're going to be winning. You're up two pieces. You might lose this piece back if you play it completely wrong, but it's not too likely. Queen e3 check, good move. White's between a rock and a hard place here because now if he stays on the back rank, black can take the rook with check. Good reason to resign. White plays king c2 and says, okay, if you take my rook, it's not check. Maybe I can do something. And black says, well, I could take your rook, but why not check you, check you back first? So he checks, bishop checks, and now again, if the king goes to the back rank with king to d1, then queen takes g1 as check. So what? So white tries to come up, black checks him again, white tries to come back, but now white can check with the rook. And the king would have to go to the back rank. So he checks with the rook, the king goes there, and now what, black has a discovered check. If he plays queen takes g1 check, king takes d2, not that that will save white. Black instead says, ooh, discovered check hitting the rook a second time. And now it's pretty much going to be mate. Whichever move he moves to, king d1 or king b1, queen takes g1 as mate. So let's go back to the key position, and we'll call it a day. So white did not get enough for his piece, but black did not play it quite accurately enough. And when we got to this position, Stockfish says f5 is winning. We looked at the bishop takes e2 line. Let's look at another line. Let's say black tries bishop takes e5. Now we can remove the guard with rook takes d7 check. Rook takes d7. Queen takes e5. This does a lot. It hits this pawn again with pawn takes pawn as a threat. It threatens to take the rook, it guards the knight. And here, black is up the exchange for a pawn, but white's got just way too many threats. Stockfish says black's best move is rook d6, which saves the rook and guards this pawn. It says white should pile up on that pawn with knight f4. It says black's best move by far is rook g8. Knight takes e6, threatening discoveries. Queen f6, black says, please trade queens, Mr. White. Stockfish says, no, queen e4. And we won't go any further, but at this point, Stockfish's evaluation is about plus three and a half pawns. Okay, so if White had done that instead of rook d6, and again, we can't blame White, even much stronger players than these guys, you know, it's tough to find those computer moves. It's just fun to look at the map of the game and see what we can learn. So we can't really blame him for missing it. He thought maybe he should attack this pawn here. Gives black a chance to really get a counterattack going. And not only that, when he plays rook d6, bishop takes e2 starts to come into play. And after white plays queen takes e7, bishop takes e2 is just way too good. And white is now down seven pawns. And understandably... As I said, he lost the game. Okay, so thanks uh, for uh, William for sending me the game. Uh, I'll send him a confirming email to let him know we're making a video. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't. If you liked the video, hit the like. If you need to contact me, again, send an email via my website, danheisman.com. We'll see you next time. Bye.